Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I heard a quote this morning that uh, I've been thinking about, so I figured I'd open up the topic, see if we can all have a dialogue on it. It's real simple. Formulate a philosophy of good and evil. I think it's important. Formulate a philosophy of good and evil. I think a lot of people kind of just naturally assume that they know what right and wrong is. I mean, good and evil, that's what I look at good and evil is, is right and wrong. Now, good and evil, both as just words, taking them out of the sentence, just looking at them by themselves, they're subjective. What's good to you is different to me. I have best friends that I've grown up with, I've known for 40 years, and we have different ideas of what good is. We can both come together maybe on certain things, but there's a lot more that we probably don't agree on. People want to get awfully picky. This is good, that's not good. Well, I don't know. You can have the same conversation with the word evil. What's evil to you may not be evil to me. There may be some things we can agree on, but even those, I mean, look at murder. Thou shalt not kill, right? Okay, simple. It's always wrong to murder. It's always wrong. Is it really? Is it always wrong? Is it wrong to murder when we killed Nazis? Was it wrong for, the, uh, for us to go after the Taliban? Is it wrong for us to put someone like Timothy McVeigh, the Oklahoma City bomber, for, for us to put him to death, death penalty? He killed thousands of people, innocent people, kids too. Is it wrong for you to kill somebody coming into your house? You're protecting your family or protecting yourself out on the street. There's a whole bunch of scenarios of murder where you've broke the first, you know, the first commandment, thou shalt not kill, you broke it. Now you're going to hell, but are you really? Is it evil? Is murder evil? We don't know. We could argue it. There's lawyers arguing it right now in the, uh, I'm watching it on TV right now. That Rittenhouse thing. That little, little kid, I call him a kid, looks like a kid to me. You get five people in the room and they're all going to start arguing about it. People were talking about it at the gym earlier. I mean, what is good and evil? So I've thought a lot about this stuff. And for me, it's just simple about what's right and what's wrong. What's righteous and what's fucked up. What will I tolerate and what will I not tolerate? What will I go along with? What won't I go along with? Those types of questions to me are pretty easy to answer. You could put any scenario in front of me. I don't care what we're, what we're talking about. I know what's right and what's wrong. I know that. I'm really good at identifying right and wrongs, but that's just for me. I wouldn't be able to do it for you. I couldn't force my ideology on somebody else. In fact, just like with the murder example with evil, I mean, you can very quickly find topics that People want to argue back and forth, not just to the varying degree of how wrong it is, or is it justified, but one person might think an action is completely right, like halo over their head right, with Jesus right, <laughs> and another person looks at it as wrong. But I don't have a problem for myself of determining these types of things. And one of the benefits to that, now some people say, may say, well, you sound really rigid and there are blurry lines. There's a, some people out there that truly believe that the world is a complicated place. This is the narrative that they tell themselves. And once you've already told yourself that, once you step out your front door, you enter this world that's a, a, an enigma wrapped in a puzzle, wrapped in a maze, wrapped in a, a conundrum, wrapped in a, 
I mean, it's just so hard to figure out. And people have this kind of unconfidence going through the world. I don't really know what's going on. I'm a scared animal just trying to navigate from safe spot to safe spot so I can get back to my cave and eat and go to sleep and try it all over again. Like as if that's their existence, even though we live in cities, we're not cavemen. But this is how a lot of people navigate. I navigate with a lot of confidence. And I don't feel that the world is a confusing place. I don't feel that the world is uh, complicated. To me, it's incredibly easy. It, nothing has really changed. People talk about how things have changed so much. It's so complicated. Don't let technology confuse you. Don't let the media confuse you. Don't let the woke propaganda that's being pushed by corporations confuse you. In your heart of hearts, get rid of all that mind chatter, all the crap you absorb. And you'll be able to hear that true voice inside of you and it'll tell you what's right and what's wrong. Some people are more in tune with it than others. It just takes practice, strength, you know, comes through repetition. But I hate to see people so frazzled with anxiety and panic attacks and just navigating in a really difficult way. And their life feels so, so difficult. The world feels so difficult. Everything is so hard. And that's a mindset. And people that have that mindset create their own reality. Life is hard for them. I talk to some of these people. I counsel some of them. And gosh, the things that they go through on a weekly basis is just amazing. It feels like they're cursed, but this is their mindset. Their mindset is cursed. They're doing it to themselves. You want to be able to navigate the world without feeling so overwhelmed by it. A great starting place, just a basic, basic starting place, is to formulate a philosophy of good and evil. It's going to be tailored just to you, your neighbor, your brother, your, your wife. They may not agree with you on it. It doesn't matter. Formulate your right and wrong. Stick to that shit. Live your life by it. Stick your reputation on it. Go to prison for it if you have to. Never, ever budge from it. Ever. No matter what. Then life will feel a little bit more easy to go through. You'll start to see a little bit more clearly. It won't be so foggy. Like looking out in a bay, foggy in the morning. That fog burns off and you can see the other side really clearly. It's not as far as you think. I don't know, it's just food for thought. Do you have a, a strong sense of right and wrong? Do you know the difference between good and evil? And can you finger out, point out what's good and what's evil with ease? Or is it hard for you? Do you stay confused on a lot of topics? Well, I don't know. Is that wrong or is that right? I never get stuck that way. People who have really incredibly strong senses of right and wrong they're not so scared of the world. They're not so confused by it either. Thanks for watching.